page here. Um, I'm looking for something different, oh, okay. but thank you. You watched the library meeting? No, I was in At 11.45, we, we went from the middle of our tech study. <laughs> okay. Um, Alan, you're going to lead, right? Okay, great. Um, all right. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Those of you who are on live stream, sorry for the wait. We, uh, we're, yeah, we're beginning at 7.20, so you're on just a little bit early, or we are on for you just a little bit early. Um, so Alan will come up in, in a minute and 30 seconds and lead us in Mincha, which can be found on? 2.14 in the Lev Shalem. And 2.26 in the Slim Shalom. And 5.58 in the Slim Shalom. Do we have a, a extender or no? You know, okay. because we don't use this room very often. I, got, I just, I use an eight. Is it permissible to use an eight high yeah, like yeah, this? Totally. Okay. It might be. I, this, this is fine. This is fine. Okay. Ashreya Shrevete, Hari Halu Hasela, Kahala, Ashram Shanayalab, Tilale David. Ladna Yerabe P, Viva Echo Vasashen Kachalel and Vaed, Ranakla Evia, Matavia Alam, Hallelujah, Uvalition Goel. We are Takadosh Shave Tila Yisrael, because our cells are very amar. Kadosh Thank 
Sympathy. Okay. Did you hear that? I heard that. Okay. How far away is your like? How creepy is this guy? No, no, he he literally just biked in, like oh, okay. in the door. <laughs> <laughs> How creepy are you? We're all gonna be sitting here waiting for him. Well. As long as he's in the doorway, is it the doorway when he's into the synagogue or the he doorway has to be able here? To hear you. So ah. if, well, I've got a loud voice. He has to be able to hear and respond. That's that's, that's the rule. That's okay. Okay. All right. Go ahead. All right. Uh, I'm Andrew Torres. Okay. You're the hero. Torres service. Vani tvilati lecharna yedrato Elohim eravastecha aneni bemed yishecha Vayehi bin Zoron vayome Moshe Kumarna vafuto evecha vianusa misanecha mipanecha Kimitzion de te Torah duaradona mirushalayim I think turn it the other way, just so like Joel can read from this side. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Great. So you should do Hector, is there a way to get rid of the the thing that tells me that it's being recorded? So yeah, we can see people. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I just can't. But, um, uh -oh. um, okay, we are in Parshat Chukat. And uh, just fun fact, this was my bat mitzvah maftir. Uh, and so what Joel's about to read actually is the entirety of the maftir for Shabbat para. Um, and it's, a very, it's very long. <laughs> so it's very long when it's one aliyah. Um, but it is, we're talking here about the red heifer. So for those of you who know of the red heifer, this is where it comes from. 
Um, you may take a seat, and I did not give out aliyot. So if people are interested in aliyah, um, I will I will uh, just call you up if you're interested in one. Okay, we are on page 880. Joey, if you want to be second gab, I can go on that okay. side. Um, in the Eitz Chaim Chumash, if you are not in the Eitz Chaim Chumash, it is chapter 19 of Numbers, uh, verse 1. Uh, Avraham ben Zev Ufruma. Avraham ben Zev Ufruma, Lel Yarishon Baruch, Shana Tantar Alem Ha Amen. Amen. By the bear the night, El Moshe Valeron, Le Mo, or Zot, Hukata Torah, Asher Tifa Adonai, Le Mo, Tabel, Bnei Soel, Vehuele, Aparaduma, Tmima, Asher, Ein Ba, Mum, Asher, Lo Alea, Ol, Unatem, Ota, El Elazar, Hakohen, Beotzi, Ota, El Mehut, Lamachane, Veshachat, Ota, Lefana, Belaka, Elazar, Hakohem in the ma beets bao behiza and no hach pene old moed in the ma shavapa amim besaraf at a paral enav etora bet besara bet dama al pirsha isrof belaka hakohen et res vesovashani to la at vehishlich el toch sir efet Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech alam, Asher natan lanu Torah temet, Bechaye olam nata betochenu, Baruch atah Adonai, Noten atorah. Amen. And Alan is uh, both leading and also had his aliyah in memory of his father, uh, whose yard site will be later this week. Second aliyah? AJ, you want an aliyah? It's a little bit farther down, I think. Mm -hmm. The Chibeth, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't think that's it. No, no, not there. Uh, it, it's preceded by a ta. This is, this is up, up, right here? Yeah. Right here? Yeah. Okay. Right Baruch Adonai Hamburah. Baruch Adonai Hamburah. Baruch Adonai Hamburah. Baruch Adonai Hamburah. Baruch Baruch Adonai Amen. Bechibes Prada, Fa Kohen, Varachat, Pesaro, Bamaim, Vachayavo, Ela Machane, Vatameha Kohen, Ata Arev, Vasoref, Ota, Yechabes Begadav, Bamaim, Varachat, Pesaro, Bamaim, Vatameha, Ata Arev, Vasaf Ishtaho, Et, Efer Pora, Vehini, Yach, Mechutsa Machane, Bamakohom, Taho, Vehaita, Ledat, Bene Israel, Mishmeret, Lameini, Dachata. Ah, 
Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher natan lanu Torah temet v'chayi olam nata b'tocheinu Baruch ata Adonai noten ha-Torah Amen. Amen. Irv, you want to start, Aliyah? Okay. <laughs> we're, down, we're down just one thing, so. <laughs> you might be doing a third Aliyah and also Hazza. <laughs> Just so you know, double dipping. Okay. Yeah, I'm a hug. To be Israel. Ben Abraham and Levi. Ben Abraham and Levi. Ashley, she. 80, 81 verse 10. Yeah, I'm a hug. Yeah, I'm a hug. Yeah, Oh, okay. It's verse nine, not ten. Sorry. Right. Um, ah, here it is. Right there. Baruch Adonai 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 Baruch Vaita la dat bene Israel, le mishmeret, le meni da, hatat. You already read this. Anyway, I did. Fine. Yeah. Vechibes. Vechibes. Vechibes as half at Efer para, at Bagada, at Tame, at Ara, Vaita, Livne Israel, Loger, Hagal, Loger, Hagal, Betoham, the Hukatolam, Vahanog. והנוגע באמת לכל נפש אדם ותמה שבעת ימים הוא התחתבו, הוא התחתבו ביום השלישי וביום השביעי איתה, איתה, אם לא התחתה ביום השישי וביום השביעי לא איתה, כל הנוגע באמת בנפש האדם אשר, כל הנוגע באמת הנפש, האדם אשר ימות ולא יתחתה, ולא יתחתה את, את משכן, אדוני טמא ונכרתה הנפש ההיא מישראל, מישראל, כי אם אין ידע לא זורק עליו טמא יהיה או טומאתו ובו זאת התורה, אדם כי ימות באוהל כל הבא אל האו... כל הבא אל האוהל וכל, אש, וכל אשר באו נטמע שבעת ימים וכל כלי פתוח אשר, אשר אין צמית פתיל עליו טמא הוא וכל, וכל אשר ייגע על פני השדה בחלל חרב או במת או בעצם אדם או בכבר יטמע שבעת ימים ולקחו לטמא מעפר שרפת החטאת ונתן עליו מים חיים אל כלי. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו תורה תמת וחי העולם נתן בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן. Please rise. Vezo Tatora Samosha Leaf Nave Shalom, <laughs> <laughs> 
Does anyone other than Alan have a yard site this week and would like an El Male? Anybody on Zoom? Okay. Do you want to do the El Male yourself? You want me to do it? Okay. Um, just when I pause, you'll tell me his name. Okay. So Alan, here you can come stand next to me. So Alan, uh, we are saying this El Mali in memory of Alan's father. And if Alan chooses afterwards to say a few words, um, we'd be honored to hear them. El Mali Rachamim, Shochein Bam Ramim, Ametse Menuchanechona, Taha Kanfe Hashkina, Bema Alot Kedoshimu Teorim, Kezoa Harakia Mazhirim. Lenishmat Zev ben Yehuda Shalach Leolamo Began Eden to him and Uchato Anaha Baal Rahamim Hasi Rehu Besetra Knafecha Leolamim Utra Bitraha Himet Nishmato Adonai Hunachalato The Anuach Bashalam of Ishkavo Then Amar Amen. Just a couple of words. Um, my father died 63 years ago, and uh, I barely knew my father. Uh, he was a pioneer in television, uh, did the Wild Bill Hickok TV series, which I don't think any of you would remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, there you go, one taker. Okay, one taker <laughs> it is. And um, I just feel that uh, uh, I feel blessed to be able to say Kaddish for my father so that his neshama will have an aliyah and um, that uh, more and more that everything that possibly can go well will go well for him. Amen. May his memory continue to be a blessing. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, yes. Yeah, hallelujah, Shem Adonai, Kinis Kashem Alevado, Hallelujah, Shem Adonai, Yarm Garen Leamo, Hilalo Atida, Believe in Israel, I'm Karovo, Hallelujah, the David Mizor. Yikadavi 
Krishna Bhavir Bhavir Mavir Natsevira Davira Levira Lajmir Gurisha Bihu La Elamir Govira Davishivata Tishpa Davina Kamata Daman Bama Vimu Amen. not yet finished, your Amida, please continue at your own pace. We're on page 223, and we'll join together with Alan for the Kedusha on page 225. <laughs> Aruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu 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 Yitzhak Eloheinu Yaakov Eloheinu Sarah Eloheinu Rivka Eloheinu Rachav Eloheinu Leah Ayel HaGadol HaGibor Vanora Eloyon Gomer Chasadim Tovim Bekonei Akol Vezoher Chastei Avot Umevigo Elibne Benahem Laman Shmo Be'ava Melech Ozeo Vakir Moshia Magen Baruch Ata Adonai Magen Avram Vogate Sara Atagi Borle Lama Donai, Mechimita Bravlo Shia, Morida Tal, Mechal Kel Chaim, Bechesed Mechaimitim Brahimim Rabim, Samech Nopalim Brafecholim Matira Suim, Mechayim Atelishan Avar, Mira Marabagi Barod, Umido Melach. Melech may meet on Fayam at Smir Yeshua, Avne Mana Dalecha Yod may team, Baruch Adonai, Mechayea may team. Nikadesh Shim Chabalam, Kishem Shamakti Shimadar Bishme Marom, Kagatu Vayad Nivecha, Nikaraze El Zebe Amar. Kadosh, 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 and I saw Melohala, ah, it's for Dol, and Matam Baruch Yomeru. Baruch, give out out of Namim Gomo, the break of Chaka to play more. 
Yitgadal vid Kadashame Rabba. Amen. Ve Alma Divra Kirute, Ve Amlich Mahute, Ve Chaechon Uyamechon Uchaye de Hobe Yisrael, Ve Agala Uvizman Kari, Ve Imru. Amen. Yehe Shme Rabba Mirach, Le Alam Lome Omaya. Yit Barach, Ve Ishtabach, Ve Poar, Ve Roman, Ve Nase. Be Tadar, be it a lev, be it a lal, Shame de Kudisha, Brehu, the Ela Minko, Birhata, Vishirata, Tush Behata, Venechamata, Dame Ran Belma, the Imru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba, Min Shamaya, the Chaim, Alenu, the Alko Yisrael, the Imru, Amen. O Se Shalom, be Momav, who ya se Shalom. Alenu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. Mr. Klaus Allen, we will uh, take a few minutes for people to get some food, and then we'll do a bit of learning around, let's call it 8.03. Uh, we'll start some learning. Okay. As always, let's move tables away from the wall. Know the drill. this week, I should say, but we haven't decided if we're going to pick it up again. We know that people enjoyed it, and quite frankly, for the clergy, it's, and, and I'm sure for the interns who did it as well, it's, it's wonderful because we don't have to <laughs> prepare our own material. We just have to learn the material they give, so, and it's good material. Um, so we're, we're definitely interested. I think we just haven't, as a clergy team, been able to, to chat about it, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely something to, to look into. Um, oh, I said 8.03. It's not fair for me to start early. What? Six minutes. Like, oh, 
So people on Zoom and YouTube, I just, everyone's getting a little bit of food. So if you'd like to go get a snack, um, Gary, I hear has some really great oranges. I've, I've had one off of his tree. Um, and uh, we'll start in like five-ish minutes. Gary, are you eating your own oranges? I was eating my own oranges, but she had oranges that I picked six months ago. They're in the refrigerator. Oh, because I um I had speaker view, so I couldn't see. You know what I mean? I couldn't see. No, we until have, just now. Our, 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 there is a great orange tree. It's coming up. Their fruit is getting big, but it's um one of the few things that I'm watering in LA at the moment. Do tree. you have lemons too? No. I do, do have, have avocados. I, I have avocados. I have a um, an apricot tree, which is still is, which hasn't started yet. I, plum tree did really well. Mm, nice things to think about. My dead lawn at the moment. <laughs> ah, so, are your kids? I don't remember. I think they're older. Are they too old for camp, or is it, are they home with you or at camp? My son is actually with a roast at Vermont. Ah. And my daughter, I don't know where she is. She doesn't live with, she, she lives in an apartment and uh, yeah. Oh, so she's apartment. older. Yeah. Well, only well, they're, uh, 26 and 24 right now. Oh, Almost uh, actually birthday. Oh, I don't know why I thought you had a younger ones. I have it, but uh, their son is 20. Well, our son, 20. Yeah, you, you might've seen him with us. I guess he, yeah, in his 20s. He's yeah. 20, still 40, 24. Yeah. He'll be in. But yeah, he's, 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 moving, he's moving back home um next when he finishes Rama. It was a nice break ah. for for both of us. <laughs> he, got, he stopped working for the county of Riverside as a COVID tracer. But they were firing everybody yeah. anyways. Might as well go to Ramah. All right. With where? Mm -hmm. You have a son, Tybal, is that right? Yes, I have one it's child. He's twenty six. And oh. at the moment, he's getting on a flight to Hungary, and I'm a little flipped out. Oh, wow. Mm. You know, oh, troops really? massing on the border of yeah. that Hungary. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. Wow. Yeah, so we have all these contingency plans if he has to evacuate. But... Uh-huh. Mm. I think Hungary is probably safer than him. I don't think yeah. I'd be in. Yeah, but the news just yesterday, there were more NATO troops deployed to the border. It's going to a conference, and the conference, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's either Debrecen or Debrecen, and it's really near the border. Mm -hmm. And the unfortunate thing is my spouse, who was his father, is half a Hungarian, half Hungarian Jew, and all the family towns are right near Debrecen, but this, he's not going to be going any, you know. It's mm -hmm. just a conference and staying at the university, not roaming. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, what kind of conference? Um, he's a mathematician and it's a math conference. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I can understand here. Yeah, yeah, originally it started when he was thinking about it and it was right after the war. He was really uncertain. He said he would let me make the decision. And I thought about it and all this stuff and said, do you have anyone to go with? He's actually in England, based in England. Didn't have anyone to go with, blah, blah. I said, well, I don't think you should go. And he said, I changed my mind. I'm deciding I want to go. I mean, he's 26. How can we do anyway? Right. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we have all these emergency plans just in case. I know it's not that likely, but it's still possible anyway. How long is anyway. it for the few days? Um, it's, uh, it's the third to the eighth, and he was going to come back the ninth, but British Air already canceled his return. Hmm. So then he's coming back uh, the eighth a day early. So. Oh, okay. Hmm. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. Oh. Yep. And so to, see what, to, to Harry for them or to uh, um, not enough people? Pardon me? Why do I don't you, know. Why? British yeah. Airways didn't explain when they canceled. They canceled it maybe a week ago, I think. I'm guessing it's just like the, st I mean, it's not like the 4th of July issue, but I'm guessing they have people out with COVID. Gas uh -huh. got a whole lot more expensive. So they have new rules for how full it's supposed to be. You know, all those yeah. things. Right. So. 
Yep, 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 yep. I hope he's not checking luggage either. No, um, no, he's not. Good. It's a little more complicated, but that's part of it. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. That's good. I've heard that's like a big problem too. Yeah. Wait, wait. That's a very wait. good memory, Tom. Uh, hello, everyone. Oh, I said 8.03. It's 8.02. So as long as everyone's okay with me lying a little bit, um, we're going to start. So, oh, thank you. Um, I appreciate that. I won't lie to you about many things, but um, so I just can't tell how to. All right. You can hear me, even if the scene of me is a little bit more awkward. Um, so sometimes when I teach, I teach about, you know, a verse that I really have some kind of chiddish around or something that a commentary that I really enjoy or something that I want to teach based off of that verse. Today is a little bit more drashy. Um, it will still be a teaching and it'll still be interactive. But in terms of kind of how I got to this place, it's a little bit more um, as if I was writing my own midrash, less of like a, a practical, technical um, uh, takeaway that I want you to have. So with that very vague introduction, what, what I want us to talk about today is the fact that this week's Parsha and Parshat Chukat, we lose two people, both Aaron and Miriam die, which, you know, we have a very long Torah. So the, the fact that whoever decided to put the Torah together, the way that the Torah was put together in terms of the different Parshiot, the fact that in one Parsha, we have both of these deaths is kind of interesting, right? You would think that two main characters, right? If you're writing a play or if you're writing a novel, you probably aren't going to have two main characters die in the same act or in the same chapter of a book. But we do have that. We have we have Miriam and Aaron die, and they di they die in very different ways, and the community has very different ways of approaching their death. And at the beginning of the parsha, before they die, we hear of this death ritual around the washing of a body, and how if you approach a body that has died, you yourself become what what we say in English, which as you've all heard me say, I don't love as a translation, you become t you become impure, you become unfit for ritual closeness, right? You are you are unable to go to the temple to make sacrifices to have a close relationship with God. You are the opposite of Tahor, you're the opposite of quote pure, another translation I don't love. So why do we get that ritual and tradition at the beginning of this Parsha, and then we get these two deaths within the Parsha that, spoiler alert, don't talk about actually doing this ritual at all. We don't talk about this ritual of approaching a dead body or washing the body at all in terms of Miriam's death or Aaron's death. So why is it in the same Parsha? Why do we mention it in the first place? And why isn't it being used for Aaron and for Miriam? We're not going to get any of those answers today. <laughs> um, the rabbis, the, at least the commentaries and the and the different texts that I read in preparation for this class, had nothing to say on that question. Um, that doesn't mean that no one has anything to say on it. I just I didn't come across it while I was preparing this teaching. So I do have a few commentaries that we're going to look at, but I'm very curious to know what you think. And again, this is why this is going to be a little bit more drashy, a little bit more interpretive, um, and uh, and midrashic, so to speak for us today as opposed to intertextual. But I wanna go through the, the, the uh, verses first, and then um, I'm happy to hear from people before we go to the commentaries, what you think of this general, this general premise of Suda Shlishi teaching. Okay, so Numbers 19, right? We're still in Parshat Chukat. Um, it says here, Kol hanogea bamet banefesh adam asher yamut, Velo yit et et mishkan Adonai. So those who touch a corpse, right? Nogea means to touch or to uh, literally to grope, but to to any be be close to in terms of physical touch to a mate to a dead person. Um, Benefesh ha adam. It says here the body of a person who has died. I just got done telling Jackie that I usually change translations if I don't love them. I should have changed this. Benefesh ha adam means the soul of the person. Doesn't actually mean the body. So it's interesting that we go as far to say that you can't be near a mate, where which is basically them saying don't get near a dead 
body, but then they refer to the mate here as a nefesh, as a soul. So it's not only don't get near a dead body, but don't get near the soul of a body that is still in, in that flesh. Um, and do not purify themselves or and defy. So, sorry, this is all, I'm, I'm reading this out of order, which could be confusing. This is all in the negative, right? Anybody who touches a corpse, the, the soul of a person who has died and does not purify themselves, and then and therefore defiles God's tabernacle, those people shall be cut off from Israel. Venichreta hanefesh hahi. Karate, I'm definitely not going to get into this right now, but karate is a type of punishment that is not just lashes, is not just stoning, is not just what we would probably call, um, uh, the word just went left on left my brain. Um, no when you're like dismissed from excommunicated thank you so much it was on the tip of my tongue and then i got there and it went away um excommunication it's none of those things it's quite literally that you become dead to a community um i think i mentioned this a few weeks ago I, when you watch uh fiddler on the roof and uh tevia says to his daughter you're dead to me right that's karate right the community is not supposed to speak about her any longer it's as if she never existed so it's the highest punishment that you can receive and it's for the worst things that you can possibly do so that makes us believe that this type of ritual is extremely important Right, you shouldn't get near a dead body, and you should also make sure that if you do that, if you do the mitzvah of tahara, that you then don't come to the tabernacle because you wouldn't want to defile God's, God's tabernacle as a person who is tame, who is not ready for that kind of ritual closeness, or else you're going to get caught, right, or else you're going to be dead to the community, and also excommunicated. It's kind of a, a two-part process. Since the water of lustration, let me see if there's a, a better word to use here for that. Um, right? The, the water that's being used for this purification ritual was not dashed on them, they remain impure. So if you do not wash yourself in, in what we would call in the 21st century, a mikvah, or if you, don't, if you don't wash yourself in some kind of purifying way, you remain impure. And so you, are, you continue to be impure. This is where the Torah kind of repeats itself in a way that makes us know, no, really you are. Right, you continue to be impure. Oh, do you think you're impure? Yes, you, you remain impure. So the takeaway from this very short sentence that I made very long was the fact that if you get near a dead body, you are impure. And therefore, and again, impure is not a great word, but you're not ready to be close to God. Therefore, if you get close to God, that's bad for you and you get this terrible punishment. The Torah goes on to say, this is the ritual. When a person dies in a tent, whoever enters the tent and whoever is in the tent shall be impure seven days. So do the ritual, make sure that you, that you, you know, take care of the dead body, but that then you also um, wash yourself with this meinida. Because if you've gotten near a dead person for seven days, you remain tame, you remain unable to approach God. Now, I've given a different sermon at a different time about the fact that it seems silly to me, a person who, those of you who know that I've done a lot of work with Hever Kadisha, this type of work is extremely holy. So it seems bizarre to me that you would actually be almost ostracized from a community for seven days for doing very holy work. It seems a little bit dissonant. Or you could see it the other way, which is you have, you have done something so elevated that now you need to give yourself a break, right? You need to give your soul some time to come down from that. Um, that's Rabbi Kligfeld's, you know, ice cream after a funeral sermon, right? You make sure that you can, you, you replenish yourself spiritually after dealing with something that is so heavy. So that's the first verse we're looking at. So that's the ritual, right? That's the water ritual that I was referring to before. Here, this next piece is chapter chapter 20. So the next chapter, the first verse, the Israelites arrived in a body of the wilderness of Tzin on the first new moon, and the people stayed at Kadesh. That's not really so important for today. Miriam died there and was buried there. Okay, so Miriam died and she was buried. That's all we know. No one's talking about taking care of her body. No one's talking about this water ritual, just that she was buried and she died. Well, in the opposite. She, she wasn't buried first. She died and then she was buried, <laughs> which is better for her. Um, and then the next, the next verse says, the community was without water and they joined against Moshe and Aaron. So what would my question be based on the verses that we read before? 
Okay, why is that there? Yeah, Taibo? Does that mean that if you don't do the water, the, the requisite, the symmetrical punishment is being deprived of the water? I could not hear you very well, so say that one more time. That, that it's um, a measured symmetrical punishment that if you don't do the ritual with the water, you don't get the water. I mean, oh, I know- Oh, interesting, okay. So, so if you, great. So the, the fact that, that what Taibo just said, for those who, who couldn't hear, it was a little bit hard to hear in this room, um, that if you don't do the ritual with the water to make yourself pure after dealing with someone who has died, then you don't get water. Interesting, I saw it a very different way, which is how can they do the ritual with the water if the water went away, <laughs> right? If the water goes away after Miriam dies, now what water? Right? How are you going to do this ritual? But Tybal's Tybal, uh, point is also well taken. But how are you going to do the ritual? There's no water. We were just told the water was taken away because Miriam died. Okay. Then the third, ex the second, uh, the second example based off the second death example based off of this teaching is the same chapter, um, chapter 20, verse 25. Interesting. By the way, when I was setting this all up, I said that Miriam and Aaron died in the same parsha. They died in the same chapter. Right, so this, this is really, we are very, we are very, um, I don't know, invested in, in hearing about these two deaths, and unfortunately they happen in the same chapter, at the beginning and at the end, but still. Take Aaron and his son Eleazar and bring them up on Mount Hor. Okay, so it's really, oh no, that's right, Hor, yeah. Um, so you are supposed to take Eleazar, Aaron's son, and you're, you're to go up to the mountain. Why might that happen? For those of us who don't know the rest of the story. Oh, okay, maybe the, the way he was gonna be sacrificed. That takes us back to Genesis. Yeah, exactly. To make sure to pass on the power before his father dies so that his father knows where the power is then going once he once he's no longer around. Strip Aaron of his, of his vestments and put them on his son Eleazar. There Aaron should be gathered until the, unto the dead. So basically he's saying as soon as you put your clothing of, um, I don't know, of... of valor on your son we now know it's like it's like the handing over of a gavel right we now know that he's in charge and then you're you can die right you can um you can be gathered unto the dead as it says here in the torah so moses does this he strips aaron of his, of his vestments and puts them on on eleazar and aaron dies there on the summit of the mountain when moses and eleazar came down from the mountain the whole community knew that aaron had breathed his last all the house of israel bewailed aaron 30 days so there is ritual around aaron's death what is it great they bewailed him for 30 days we call that shloshim today nothing else right no tahara no water nothing just he died and they mourned him now miriam and aaron both die in ways that show us that the community cared for them right the water goes away so you miss miriam uh we mourn aaron for 30 days so we know that he was important to us but why start the Parsha off telling us about a death ritual to, to really care for those who are in your community, who you, who you care for, not to say that word too many times in one sentence. And yet then when Aaron and Miriam die, we don't do it. Or maybe it's not mentioned, but it should be mentioned if we just learned how to do it, right? Okay, Ty, will try again. It's extremely hard to hear in this room, but try again. Um, the way you just said that, it made me wonder do we already know about a birth ritual when after a woman who gives birth, she has to separate herself from the community? Um, that's a good question. Has it already come up in the Torah? So Tybal's referring to when a woman gives birth for a boy, it's a certain amount of time and a girl, it's a certain amount of time. It's Tazria. Jackie knew that it was in Parsha Tazria. So yes, we already know of it. Yeah. Oh, because Alan, that that's a... matched. I was going to say that's matched birth and death. That Earth what? Separation. That separation of what? It's matched birth and death. The same way you reframed it is you just did something very holy, so you need time to regroup. It's not like an ostracism. I was just saying that's just another match. Yeah, thing. yeah. Great, great, great. Yes, right. That is that is, correct. Exactly. Um, 
Jackie wants everybody to know that she that she knew that because it was her bat mitzvah parsha, but she's also a great student and she will be a great rabbi one day. Um, any questions on this or comments? So now you kind of see why I was interested in in these different pieces. Anybody have any any midrash on this or any commentaries you can give on this? Yeah. Oh yeah, so you must have read one of the commentaries, which is totally fine. Um, so Irv is just referring to the fact that in one of the commentaries that we may or may not get to, it talks about how, well, why why did we mourn Aaron for 30 days? And for Moshe, it doesn't say anything about us mourning for him. And that's because Aaron was a Rodef Shalom. And so this idea that Aaron kind of went uh, went above and beyond to make sure that people felt like he, an oh, Ohev Shalom, we Rodef Shalom. Sorry, for, I didn't say the whole, the whole his whole title. Um, the fact that he went kind of above and beyond to make sure that people felt like they were cared for and taken care of and the midrash says that you know when when a man and wife were arguing and had some kind of issue that he would bring them back together and so the people really felt a sense of attachment to him because he was helping them stay as a community and attached and the fact that it says that everybody mourned him for 30 for 30 days meant the rabbis love bringing this up meant that it wasn't just the men that mourned him, but it was also the women. And so that's why the Midrash um, brings up the women. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, no, great. That's great. That's wonderful. Yeah, Alan. Right. Right. Mm. Very interesting. That actually that actually gets to this last um, commentary that we're gonna read probably at the end. So that's a really yes. We'll we'll get there in just one second. Uh, Gary, go ahead. Oh, I'm glad to see that the source sheet went out because you have it printed. Great. That's the Marlise does a great job of that stuff. Anyways, um, my question was, I, you can't expect for Aaron to be to be bathed in water. There's no water on the top of a mountain. You know, this is the summit of the mountain. So you're making assumptions that there's gonna be water available and then nobody else was there. There's no, right. there was nobody else coming up except for the sun with him. Right, that, Gary makes a good point, right? We could assume that there probably wasn't so much water available to begin with and also that there was no one else around. So maybe the ritual couldn't be done because there was no one actually there when Aaron was um, taken onto the dead, as it says. We don't really know what that means, but but probably that he just, that he died, um, but that no one was around for his death. They had kind of prepared him for his death, but no one was actually there upon his death. Any other thoughts on this? Yeah, Tom. It's not really on that. So okay. I know. Yeah. 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 Ah. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you raise my hand? Yeah. Muted? Well, not muted. Mm. <clears throat> great, great. So Tom just Tom just went back to this idea of both the use of nefesh as soul and also the idea of karate as being a cutting off of the soul, not just sending a person out from the, at that time, camp, but, but really a cutting off of the person as they as they once were. And that maybe it has less to do with the actual ritual, the physical washing, the, the physical closeness to a body, but actually more that when we experience death, whether it's a person who we are close to or just communally, 
know that there is a death, it does do something to your soul, right? It does something to the way that you care for another person. It does something to you if you've had experience with death that you are then affected by and, and brought back to in terms of um, experiencing someone else's loss. So that all of that does get does get kind of brought uh, back to the surface, so to speak, in terms of it not being necessarily about the body, but about but about the soul. And it would be interesting to look into whether or not the rabbis thought, because it doesn't say this in the Torah anywhere, but whether or not the rabbis thought that tahara was important, because obviously back in the day people died and it was a much messier experience than it typically is today. Um, and so Tahara was both necessary hygienically and also ritually, but also were we were we dealing with a soul, right? Did we want to make sure that we were actually purifying a soul before it went um, before it went for burial as opposed to just the body? It's a really interesting point. Gary, is that a residual hand or is that a... a Marlies oh, Marlies. Yes, yeah, speak loud, Marlies. Okay. I just had a question. If you're in the presence of someone who dies, are you considered to me or any type yes. of status change? Oh, you are. Yeah. So if you are, so I've told this story quite a few times. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sorry for repeating myself. When I first started here at Betham, mm -hmm. a teacher of mine and a congregant of ours died in their home. And I went and sat with the body for quite a few hours before anybody could come to, to pick them up. And I was then considered, I mean, I, we don't really have these... Um, these standards, I should say, any longer. Could I have gone to a mikvah? I guess I could have. I'm now thinking about it years later, but I guess I could have. Um, but yes, technically, I was then in a state of tuma, um, which for a whole host of other reasons, most of us are always in a state of tuma, but we don't have to get into that right now. Uh, but yeah, just by being around the dead body, even though I didn't touch them and I didn't, you know, I had nothing to do with the actual body itself. Yeah, good question. Thank you. So I want to read this last, this last, um, I don't even know that you can call it a midrash, this last piece of text, this last commentary here on the page. The others are, are commentaries that are very interesting, some of them more known to us than others, one from Rashi, one from Chizkuni, and then that um, midrash that Irv mentioned that I think many people know in terms of why Aaron was mourned for 30 days. But this was one I had never seen before. It's also from a book I've never heard of before. Um, but it's it's an interesting way of thinking about why why all this death kind of in one space and, and potentially why uh, the ritual was important to know of even going into this. Out of the three seminal protagonists who forged the Exodus, Moshe, Aaron, and Miriam, two died in the Book of Numbers, and all three died in the wilderness, right? This does not go as far as to say, and two mm -hmm. die in the same chapter, in the same Parsha, but that is also true. Moshe dies alone, buried in a valley overlooking a place of Israelite debauchery. Miriam's death catches us completely by surprise in the opening of Numbers 20 and merits only a clause in one verse. And the people stayed at Kadesh. Miriam died there and was buried there. The community was without water and they joined against Moshe and Aaron. So if you've never read the Torah before, you come across this and you're like, wait a second, what? what how what what there are a lot of questions around why she died and how she died and why are we just hearing about her death and was there a lead up to her death? There is no recorded communal burial. It is as if the sands quickly covered her as the Israelites marched on, complaining insensitively about their unquenchable thirst to two fresh mourners. Interesting, when I read this, what I thought, well, let me ask you, what would you think of when, when reading this sentence about the sand covering her up? The covenant, Abraham. Okay, but but who's the other character in the Torah that gets covered up by sand after dying? Cor okay, Korach was not the one I was thinking of, but good, yes. The Egyptian who Moshe kills, right? Which is really interesting. I, I hadn't really... I didn't put those two things together, but as death became a looming reality, the grieving brothers barely picked up their heads at the loss. Miriam was one of many, an entire generation who disappeared into oblivion. Right, so this is going very you know, harsh into why don't we know more about Miriam's death and why don't we take care to know more about um, her passing. The text informs us of the fate of tribes who were poised to conquer the land. Um, 
I'm just gonna skip a little since that's not our topic. Tens of thousands died in the Midbar, in the, in the wilderness, fulfilling God's prediction. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, I will do to you just as you have urged me. In this very wilderness shall your carcasses fall. Right, that's from Numbers a little bit earlier on. The observations of one scholar, the omission of particular discrete sites of burial has the effect of turning the wilderness in its entirety into a vast and terrible burying ground. So. Yeah. Yeah, she's not she's not ignored. We just don't know as much about her death. We just know how her death affected everybody else, but we don't necessarily know about how how and why. So to close this out, again, I started off by telling you we wouldn't have any answers, but I wanted to bring this as a kind of an interesting arc to this week's Parsha, that if we're going to start off by hearing about a ritual that even in the 21st century, we we hold up as a very important ritual, right? The whole reason we started a Hever Kedisha with Ikar was because this is something that it feels very important to us. And the two, two of the three main characters of, you know, I would say 75% of our Torah die right after we get this ritual and yet we don't use it. So I just wanted to bring this as, as an interesting thing for you to think about um, while you're reading through this Parsha and AJ will get the last word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, most deaths in Torah, woman or man, don't really have yeah there's no there's no real emotion right yeah that's what alan just said yeah rachel i guess is the closest um but but yeah it's a really good point that just you know death in general but specifically women until miriam there isn't really necessarily a correct correct 100 percent. right Right, what AJ just said, which is really important um, for those of you on Zoom to hear, is that they weren't really mourning Miriam at all. They were really mourning that which they lost when Miriam died, right? She was an asset to water that they needed, and then she died, and that water went away. So um, interesting that she was kind of a vessel for that which they needed, and the vessel went away. So Shabbat Shalom. I hope this is somewhat somewhat interesting and, and a thing that you can think about as we're as we're living in Parshat Chukat all week. Um, and also to just recognize, I was telling Jackie, I put this text together um, after Jackie's father passed away without really thinking that I had put it together in that in that context. But it is interesting to to live in a community where death is coming and death is going. Obviously, it's a very major part of our community and the ways in which we deal with with the death rituals, right? Some of us are very involved in the Hever Kedisha parts of things. Some of us are just involved in recognizing how people when they die are leaving things behind that we have to then either pick up in a very fond way or pick up in a way that is harder for us to be without or when it comes to Aaron who are sitting around and we're really mourning them for a very very long time so as a community we go kind of through all three of these different experiences Shabbat Shalom let's uh let's do beer cup pretty quickly and uh and then we will move on to mariv so i will start shir hamalot and then joey you look like you're ready to do a zimun you want to do that for us okay great we'll do beer cut uh, after the zimun we'll do it to yourselves but we'll start off with shir hamalot aloud uh, Et shivitenu ka fikim ba negev ha zorim Bedima berina iksoru ha lo chelech uvachon o seme
Meshech Hazahara Bohoyava Verina Nose Alumata. All right, for those who have not finished Birkat, you can continue. Page 264 for Mariv and the Lev Shalem. And if you're able to do so, please rise. You may be seated. 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 You The Ahavatecha, the Sierra Menule, Olamim, Baruchata, Adonai, O Heva Mo, Israel, Shema Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Echad.
Umachuto Braton Kiblu Alehem Oshevene Israel Khanu Shiraba Simcharaba Viam Rukulam Miha Mohabali Maronai Mika Mohane Dara Kodesh Norati Loto Se Fele Mahute Haru Vanecha Boke Yam Leaf Ne Moshe Zeli Vanu Vamru Adonai Him Lach Lilam Vahed Vene Emar Kifata Adonai Jacob Galomi Ad Hazag Mi Menu Baruchata Adonai Gal Israel, Ashkivenu and Onaila Hilashala, the new Makanu of the Sophonis. Ushmor Tainu, Voina Lechaimu Shalom et Ave Adolam, Baruchata Adonai, Shomer Moisra Elad, Baruchan and Alam, Amen Ve Amen, Baruchan and Emmet and Shahin Shalom, Hallelujah. Ki ha malchut shelechahi uleom leati mach bechavo ki lanu melech leata baruchata Adonai ha melech bechvodo taminim lach aleinu leolam vahed vel kol masav it kadav it kadav shemeraba be amad ivrach kirtev yamlich machute bechaye chonu yom chonu bechaye dechol beit Yisrael bagalav izman kari vimru amein yehi shemeraba mevarach leolam lemeomayan. Yit barach vishtabach vit ba'ar vit arma vit nase vit hadar vit ala vit alal shmei de kudesh tabrichum leila min kol berchata veshirata tish berchata venechemata da amiran be'alma ve'imru amen.
you're not yet if you have not yet finished your Amidah, please continue at your own pace. Chatsi Kaddish can be found on page 279. Yit barach vishta bach vich par vich ramam ina se vita dar vita la vita lash mi dikur shabrichu leila min kaber chata vishir atajish bechata v'nechem ata dami ran v'amavim ruhu amen. Thank you. I didn't pay attention. We're, we'll continue on that page with vehi noam vehi noam adonai lo hi noam leni ma seyed etin kolam leni ma seyed etin kolam ne yeshavat etin. Yikra eni venu imono chivatara vatsara achlatse vechwa de or chemi must be very bishuhati or chemi must be very bishuhati. We turn now to page 216. Ve ata kadosh shavti lo tisra ve karazel ze ve amar kadosh 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 and I tsva melachla arets kevado. I'm a kalinda medina. Vatisa eni roch veshma chorai korash kado baruch avaranai mimkomo. Matatani roch avaranai mimkomo. Adonai mach lelam vaed. 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 Veiv dechu vechayode shemecha kilo zav to doshech Adonai Adonai chafet saman siko yagdil Torah veyadir Kadish Alem back on page two eighty. Yitkadal v'kadash meraban behamadi raki utev yamlich machutev vechayeh chonu yom chonu vechayeh dechol beit Yisrael bagalav izman kariv imru amehim yehesh meram avarach leolam lameomaya. Each barach, vishta bach, which parvich of Mavina, say, Vita da, Vita la Vita lash, made a good shabri hum. Leila, mean cobber hata, vishira tajish behata, and nehemata, dami ran bail mavim ruhu, amen. Tit cal belts, lot of hon of a hond, the holy Israel, kodam of a hond of Vishamaya, vim ru, amen. Ye hey, some ravish of my Vahimal and Uva cloister of Imru, amen. O se shalom, your mav, who yes, shalom, Alinuva cloister, hell, vim ru, amen. Alenu le shabeach la dona kola tetkila le tebre shishila sanagir. Manach nu kola. Kaka tu betara tacharana yumloch lilam vaev in the MR vehaya adonai the melacha kolha aret vayom hahui adonai hechad ushemo echad. Mourners Kaddish. Yit gadal veyit kadash sheme raba be alma divra kirute veamlich machute vehayechon uviomechon uvhaye de holbeit Israel baagala uvizman kari veimru amen. Yehei Shme Rabba Mevarach Leolam Lame Omayam Yit Barach Veish Dabach Veit Paar Veit Ramam Veit Nase Veit Hadar Veit Ale Veit Halal Shemeid Kudisha Brechum Leela Min Kol Birchata Veshirata Tush Bechata Venechemata Da Amiran Bealma Veimru Amem Yehei Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya Vehaim Alenu, Ve Alkol Yisrael, Ve Imru, Amen. O se shalom bi Ramav, Hu ya ase shalom, Alenu, Ve Alkol Yisrael, Ve Imru, Amen. Um, I'm going to do announcements first because we have about two minutes before we can do Havdala. So, first of all, Yashakach to Joel for reading Torah. Um, 
and oh, Alan for leading us in Mincha. That feels like a lifetime ago. Um, the upcoming this week, Jackie continues with Shiva tomorrow morning here at Daily Minion. The mornings are here. The evenings are at 1814 South Point View. I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, if if that is, just look on the what? Yeah, well, you know, if they want to come to Shiva. Um, and uh, but look on the look on the uh, the email to see if that's the correct address. Um, those are in the evening. So evenings at 7 p.m. Morning, Sunday, Monday, 8 a.m., 7.30, Tuesday a.m. And Jackie will get up Tuesday morning. Um, Friday night, we have a community Shabbat dinner. Those of you who have been on trips with Temple Beth Am or who are looking to go on trips with Temple Beth Am, this is specifically for you, though anybody is obviously invited. Um, we are going to be having a traditional Southern Shabbat dinner, um, so fried chicken and the like. Uh, there will definitely be vegan and vegetarian things as well, or else Rabbi Klickfeld can't come. Um, and that was a joke. No one, no one laughed. Okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, um, we'll also have a program. We're going to be hearing from a few of the different people who have gone on these trips um, throughout throughout dinner and services. So hope you will come to that. We already have a very good group of people coming um, in terms of numbers, and we hope that you will join them as well. Next week, Saturday morning, we have Beitenu, like we did this morning outside on Zirin Family Field. I will be teaching in memory of my uncle. Um, so if you would like to come, please do. Saturday afternoon, I have no time, I have no idea what time, but we'll be back here in Pilch and then we can give you announcements from that point forward. Am I missing anything this upcoming week? It is in fact the 4th of July. I don't think that means anything for Tom Betham other than minions at eight as opposed to 7.30. Okay, um, it is exactly time for Havdalah. So if you'd like to follow along, it's on page 283. Okay, earlier today I got to drink boiling grape juice because it was sitting in the sun and no one realized and I put it in my mouth and I was like, oh, this is bad, really, really bad. <laughs> but it was okay. Huh? You're saying die to die. Can't you hear that? It's hard. I mean, it's not hard. It's not loud, but yeah. <laughs> Just going for it. All right. <laughs> Let, let's start over so the people on Zoom can actually hear. But I appreciate the the start. Okay. Dinay el Yeshuati Eftach v'lo Efchad Ki ozi v'zimrat ya Adonai v'yehi li li shua Ushavtem ma'ayim besasot Mimaynei ha-Yeshua Adonai ha-Yeshua Alamcha virchatecha sela Adonai tsevahot Imanu Miskavlanu Elohei Yaakov sela Adonai tsevahot Ashrei Adam boteach bach Adonai hoshia Hamelech ya aneinu ve yom koreinu la yehudim. Haita ora ve simcha ve sason vikar kenti elanu kasi yeshu otesa uve shem adonai ekra yaina naina naina naina
Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei mirei ha'eish Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Hamavtiu ben kodesh lecho Ben ola lecho Ben Yisrael le'amim Ben yom ha'shvihi Le'sheshet yamei ha'maseh Baruch atah Adonai that's it. That's it for that. Zarenu vechasvenu yarbe yarbe kachom. Kochavim alayla. Shavu Have a great week, and we will see you soon. Shavua Tov. See you all later. Shavua Tov. I don't know. The time changes with the candle lighting times, so I don't know off the top of my head, but it'll be on the website and also on um, in the emails. <laughs> That was getting a little pretty. Yeah. I don't leave it on the ground. I don't leave it on the ground. Okay, I guess it's over. There's a Shabbat dinner. So if you want to call to RSVP, you can come to Shabbat dinner. A little bit, yeah, but we can help if, if, uh, if you need it. No, it's this coming Friday. So if you call the office this week, they'll help you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shavuot Tov. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah.